Nuclear reactors, a potential energy source for human bases on the moon. Nuclear energy emerges as a possible solution to power future lunar bases. Like many other science fiction stories, the British TV series Space, 1999, from the 1970s begins with a bang. A nuclear explosion knocks the moon out of its Earth orbit and sends the lunar base Alpha and its inhabitants on an exciting journey through outer space. It seems clear that the series made an impression on the young Elon Musk. In 2017, when outlining plans for his company SpaceX's future lunar base, he named it Alpha. Currently, SpaceX is working with NASA to return humanity to the lunar surface as part of the agency's Artemis program. However, the planned lunar base has been given a more practical name, Artemis Base Camp. The NASA and the United States Department of State jointly established guidelines for peaceful lunar exploration in the form of the Artemis Accords. So far, 36 countries have signed onto the Accords, including India, Japan, the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, the United Arab Emirates, and South Korea. China, in turn, leads the initiative for establishing a base on the moon with an equally pragmatic approach. Announced in 2021, the International Lunar Research Station currently counts Russia, Belarus, Pakistan, Azerbaijan, Venezuela, Egypt, and South Africa among its signatories. Regardless of the coalition that inaugurates the first human facility on the moon, they will all face the need to ensure a reliable source of energy. Various corporations in space Agencies from around the globe have reached the same conclusion. It's undeniable that nuclear energy stands as the only viable option to meet the energy demands of a lunar base, argues Simon Middlebook, a researcher at the Institute of Nuclear Futures at Bangor University in Wales. Unlike Earth, where the day lasts 24 hours on the moon, it corresponds to a lunar month, precisely 29.5 days. Thus, the moon experiences two weeks of sunlight followed by two weeks of darkness, with temperatures dropping to minus 130 degrees Celsius. Therefore, all Apollo missions, conducted between 1969 and 1972, were scheduled to occur during the lunar day and near the lunar equator, where temperatures are milder and sunlight is abundant to power lunar modules and scientific instruments. At the lunar south pole, where future bases are likely to be installed, some areas enjoy sunlight for more than 80% of the time. However, in permanently shadowed craters, temperatures can drop even further, possibly preserving deposits of frozen water. This water will be essential not only to sustain astronauts' lives, but also for fuel production, as there are no gas or oil resources on the moon. Nuclear is the only viable option, Middlebug asserts. Transporting fuel is not an option. Solar panels are impractical. Diesel generators would be useless, and old radioisotope. Generators simply lack the capacity to generate the required power. In the Apollo 11 mission of 1969, a thermoelectric radioisotope generator was used on the moon for the first time, harnessing the heat generated by the decay of radioactive plutonium-238 to maintain scientific instruments in operational condition. In Apollo 12, this heat was converted into electricity to power a set of instruments, marking the debut of a nuclear reactor on the moon, albeit on a much smaller scale than those used on Earth. After all, the cylindrical generator measured only 45.7 centimeters x 40.6 centimeters. This endeavor poses a significant challenge. The micro-nuclear reactor must be lightweight and resilient enough to travel 384,000 400 kilometers before being installed in extremely harsh conditions, including the intrusive presence of fine lunar dust, known as regolith, embarking on the first designs. In 2022, NASA Inc. deals with Lockheed Martin, Westinghouse, and Nine, a collaboration between Intuitive Machines and X Energy. Recently, Intuitive Machines clinched the title of being the first commercial entity to smoothly touch down on the moon marking the United States first in over half a century. The initial phase culminated in February 2024 with the unveiling of blueprints for a reactor capable of fueling a lunar base for at least a decade. We hold confidence given our track record of employing nuclear technology in prior space missions such as Pioneer, Voyager, and Cassini, all of which have significantly outlived their original life expectancies, asserts Chatel Bakta, head of NASA's lunar architecture team at the Johnson Space Center.
The harsh environment, the imperative to minimize mass and volume, ensure high reliability, and guarantee uninterrupted power to keep the crew safe are among the considerations for lunar surface reactor design, explains Bakta. Moreover, owing to the long Earth-to-Moon distance and ensuing communication delays, the system must be designed to operate autonomously, independently, with minimal human intervention. In March, the Russian space agency Roscosmos disclosed plans to erect a lunar nuclear reactor with the China National Space Administration by 2035 to power a joint lunar base. Roscosmos Director General Yuri Borisov informed Russian state media that the reactor would be constructed without human presence. Also in March, the UK Space Agency announced fresh funding totaling £2.9 million for showcasing a modular nuclear reactor for lunar use. Following an initial study in 2022, the academic industry collaboration in the UK, spearheaded by Rolls-Royce, a name perhaps more synonymous with jet engines and luxury cars. For over 60 years, Rolls-Royce has been quietly designing, manufacturing, and supporting all of the nuclear reactors for the British Navy submarines, states Jake Thompson, chief engineer of the company's novel nuclear program. We have extensive experience in delivering very small, very compact nuclear reactors, he continues. So, we are taking this capability into new and truly exciting domains such as space exploration. Rolls-Royce's microreactor program is currently in the concept development phase. Component prototypes are undergoing testing, with the aim of having a demonstration model ready for lunar deployment by 2029. These are fission-based reactor systems that will utilize a form of lightly enriched uranium, explains Thompson. We have a good idea of what these systems will look like and how much they will weigh, which is crucial in space. Each Rolls-Royce microreactor will generate 50 to 100 kilowatts and have a lifespan of at least a decade. It's entirely scalable. It depends on the architectural needs and infrastructure on the lunar surface, but we envision a microgrid with some of these reactors supplemented by solar power at the South Pole. The microreactor will have the approximate size of a small passenger car and will weigh several tons. Thompson continues. For a nuclear reactor, it's absolutely tiny. For a space system, it's still relatively large. Many entities consider miniaturization as the cornerstone for a successful endeavor, including the Institute of Nuclear Futures, collaborating with Rolls-Royce's project. We are designing the most resilient nuclear fuel possible, based on something we've been studying for a few years in the UK, called TRISO, TR Structural Isotropic, Particle, states Middlebug. It's like a gobstopper, he remarks. Middlebug refers to gobstopper candies, spherical shaped with long-lasting flavor, made of multiple layers. It's a kind of fuel where you encase the uranium in safety barriers, and it's extremely resilient. It lasts long, can survive thousands of degrees, and is the size of a poppy seed. These safety layers include graphite and silicon carbide. Middlebug asserts that graphite is radiation-tolerant under high temperatures and is the type of material we use for spacecraft nose cones. And we are now putting it inside a reactor. It's a great material, but it's not final. I think we can do better. That's what we're working on with people from all over the world. The safety concern. Undoubtedly, these lunar microreactors are stirring great excitement in the space industry. But nuclear power on Earth, while offering an alternative to limited and polluting fossil fuels, often carries associations with atomic bombs, radiation leaks, or accidents like Chernobyl in Ukraine or Fukushima in Japan. There are challenges to develop the systems, test them here on Earth, and operate them on the moon, Bakta asserts. Natural and induced environments, such as launch vibrations, cargo landings, extreme temperatures, light, and dust, are some of the crucial points to consider. We need lunar power systems that have low mass, high reliability, and fault tolerance, which can withstand these environments and still provide a lifespan of many years. Thompson is also prepared to face what could be the worst-case scenario. What if there was an explosion in Earth's atmosphere shortly after launching a spacecraft with radioactive material on board? These are engineering challenges we face every day, he remarks. We only develop a system when it is safe in all aspects of its life cycle including launch, and the reactor is designed to be turned on only when it finally reaches the lunar surface. Until the reactor is turned on, the nuclear fuel inside is inert. It's perfectly safe to handle, touch, 
and it's not radioactive until the reactor is turned on. As part of the design process, engineers also consider end-of-life procedures for these microreactors. When our lunar reactor mission ends, we will shut it down and radiation levels will gradually decrease, so it can be safely handled and moved to a long-term storage location, if desired, Bakta explains. The money and time needed to mature these technologies are essential, but the benefits of lunar microreactor projects could extend to Earth, including flexible and scalable energy production modules, much smaller than existing power plants, as well as nuclear medicine. We've had many nuclear renaissances, but this is an opportunity to demonstrate that nuclear power is safe and emits zero carbon at the point of supply, says Middleburg. He is very optimistic about this technology, in space and on Earth. Thank you for joining us on this journey, exploring the potential of nuclear reactors as an energy source for lunar bases. If you found this information fascinating, don't forget to give us a like, leave a comment, share with your friends, and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content. And remember, there's a whole universe of videos waiting for you to explore on our channel. Stay curious, stay informed, and let's continue unraveling the mysteries of space together.